channel my name is Wolo and um, the weather is getting cold today is five degrees summer is over this is now fall it's supposed to be fall but it's looking like it's winter because um, the weather just dropped drastically and um, I think in some places in Canada like Calgary they had some bit of snow yeah so summer is over we are now in the winter season and um, so today I'll be talking about uh, the reasons why African students, especially Nigerians, have been um, getting a lot of denials of study permits from Canadian, um, from the Canadian Immigration Office. And um, I will start first of all with what it takes to get a study permit. So the first thing is to get an acceptance from a designated learning institute. That means once you apply for a student, uh, once you apply to study in Canada, um, you it must be a designated learning institute number one. And then once you get an acceptance letter, you get the admission into the into the institution. Um, it is important that you have the finances to pay for the tuition and also have enough finances to pay for your living expense. So if you don't have that, you need to watch um, the video I did last on um, cost of living and tuition for international students so that you can have an idea of what it costs for an international student um, school fees and living expense. So what it means is you need to pay that um, as part of, um, you need to pay your tuition fees and also have at least a one year living expense um, amount in your account and then the last requirement is that you must satisfy the immigration authorities that you will leave canada at the end of your studies so now um that is where so that is where it is really really interesting the ability to satisfy the immigration authorities that you will be leaving canada at the end of your studies is where a lot of people um, make the mistake and at the end of the day they get um, rejected or denied study permits to come and study in Canada. Um, some years back, like at some years back, like 2017, 2016, it wasn't that um, hard. It was very easy to get an admission and also very easy to get a study permit. But um, from 20, towards the end of 2018 and then 2019, a lot of Nigerian, I'll use the word Nigerian students, have um, received a lot of um, denials and uh, rejections of study permits um, when they applied for study permits. And um, I'll be discussing the issues today so that before you tell yourself you want to come and study in Canada, you should do a self-assessment. And what I'm going to be talking about will be the self-assessment. You have to uh, assess yourself on various parameters, on various level. And ask yourself that if you put in your application for a study permit, will it be successful or not? If you are able to assess yourself on these factors, and you will, you know that you will not, you are not passing the, the self assessment, then it's better not to waste your money or spend your money applying for admission or trying to get a study permit to come to Canada. The major reason is because. The Canadian government already know that a lot of people want to use coming to Canada as students to use that, use that as an opportunity to um, also immigrate because once you come as a student, there's an opportunity for your spouse, if you're married, to get an open work permit to come and work in Canada. And after working for one year, the, your spouse will be eligible to apply for the Canadian experience class while you are still studying. So that's what they know. They know these things that a lot of people want to use um, the study permit as an avenue to come study in Canada and uh, also to immigrate permanently in Canada. So uh, before you put in your application, you need to ask yourself, will you be able to satisfy the immigration authorities that after your studies, you will be leaving Canada? Although the intention is to you know, immigrate after your studies, but do you also have um, enough strong reasons to take you back to your home country? And uh, so I'll be talking about the self-assessment, what you should be assessing yourself on before you um, indicate interest to apply to come study in Canada. So number one self-assessment is, do you have enough travel history? When I mean travel history, do you have an extensive travel history? I'm not talking about traveling to Dubai or Ghana. I'm talking about traveling to places like Europe or the US. 
if you have extensive travel history let's say three years four years travel history that you can show as proof then you can tick yourself good in that aspect to say okay once you um apply in the aspect of travel extensive travel history the the visa officers know that yes you have enough travel history and you are likely going to satisfy them on that area that you'll be returning back to your home country so that's number one number two is do you have the finances so the finances are very important because even with people who have finances they have also turned them back they've also rejected the applications and denied them study permit so you have to assess yourself on that do you have the money to pay for your tuition your one-year tuition do you also have the money to pay for your living expense? When I'm talking about tuition, I'm talking about in the tens of thousands or $15,000, depending on what you want to study. So the question is, do you have enough finances to cover your living expense, to cover your health care, and also to cover your return to your home country? If you have enough money, if you have enough money, when I'm talking about money, I'm talking about 40,000 to 50,000 Canadian dollars in your own account. You can have a sponsor. Yes, there are people who have sponsors and people who have sponsors are basically for um, um, students who just finished secondary school or high school. For those group of people, they just finished secondary school. Of course, they've not been working. They've not started working. They've not gotten, gotten into the university. So their sponsors could be their parents or their uncles or maybe their senior siblings or something like that. So for those category of people, um, having a sponsor is acceptable. So you can also present the sponsor's statement of account. But for somebody who has already graduated um, or has a first degree already and plans to come to Canada to, to do a second degree, it's very important that you have your own money yourself because if you're presenting somebody's account to say that the person is going to be the one that will sponsor you, they will the immigration officers are not dumb they see it as people just you know using that as a means to come to canada and then once they get here they shelve their education and start hustling so they are not dumb though that's one thing you should know if you are a matured person coming to school in canada you should have your own money you should be able to show enough proof that you have your own money to cover for your tuition to cover for your health care to cover for your living expense to cover for your transportation back to your home country and then secondly it's also advisable that you pay the tuition fees up front although there are people who have paid the tuition fees up front they still got denied study permit because of other reasons which i'm going to mention later so it's still not a guarantee that even if you have the money you will still be getting a study permit there are other factors that they also look at before they give a study permit so the finances is very key you shouldn't be saying, uh, okay, I don't have money. I'll be borrowing money from my mother or I'll be borrowing money from my sister or my borrowing money from my brother, especially if you've already had a first degree and you want to come to Canada to do your master's or your postgraduate diploma. Those things, they look at them critically to see if you can sustain yourself without support of anybody. If you don't have the money, then you should just take yourself bad in that area in that particular self-assessment and do not even bother to start applying to any school to get admission like i mentioned two years back they were not looking at all these things but i don't i don't know what went wrong and all of a sudden they started bringing all these um what do you call it now all these i would like call them hoops they started bringing all these hoops for people to jump um uh, before they give um people study permits so that's number two your finances they are very important that's number two. So the third aspect where you're going to be assessing yourself before you decide to come to Canada as a student is um, the aspect of having strong ties. Um, having strong ties in Canada is more like a red flag because they see it as you not wanting to go back, especially if you have a relative or a sibling. It's very uh, difficult to prove to them that if you, if you have a sibling in Canada, you just want to come and study that you will go back. It's very difficult to prove because I, I know somebody who mentioned that she had um, a cousin and she still got denied um, a study permit. So this aspect of having strong ties, if you say you have somebody in Canada who is a relative, it might affect your application. If you say um, you all your relatives are back in Nigeria, then it can help your application in um, it, when the visa officer is assessing your application. So the aspect of having strong ties, another aspect, apart from family, you can, if you're, if you're married and you want to apply, it is advisable. I'm just, I'm just, you can do whatever you want. I personally, based on what I have seen and the trends I've seen, 
it's advisable that only one person apply for the study permit so that once you get it and you land you'll be able to have enough time to um you know settle and then um then your family members can also apply later for a work open work permit and then come to join you so if you are because that's alone that itself alone creates a strong tie for your application it strengthens your application to show that okay you have family you have children you are leaving them back in nigeria and you just want to come study and go back to your home country but if you're applying and then you're applying with your family members of course they already know that you you just want to use it as an avenue to come and then get immigration status so based on that they deny a lot of people study permits so it's best to apply alone it's just an advice it's best to apply alone if you have a family member if you have if you're married if you have children it's best to apply alone and then once you get the study permit you can come and pave the way for your family members to come join you later um it's not that some other persons do not get um visas once they apply with family members they do they get visas even one of my friends just recently got uh, her own study permit and she's currently in calgary um, studying um baking which i'll talk about later this cat category of people who apply as a family they have already had extensive history or a travel history they've already had the finances they have um a lot of things going for them so it's easy for the visa officers or the immigration officers to give this category of people visas even when they're applying with families but if you're someone who does not does not have an extensive travel history you don't even have the finances and you then you want to now start applying for a study permit with your family member you're likely going to get denied um, a study permit so it's best not to apply with your family member it's best for you to apply alone so that you can give that as an example to say you have strong ties that will bring you back home your family members are back home uh your business is back home you have to uh, you have no reason but you have no choice but to go back after your studies another important reason when you're, you you have to demonstrate strong ties and uh, why people get denied um, um study permit is because they are not able to show the relationship between what they want to study and what they are they have been doing before like when i talked about my friend who go, go, who recently got study permit with her every member of her family applied at the same time and they all got study permit and the husband got an open work permit um in her own case she already has a first degree has a second degree and then she started a business she started a a, a baking business which she has been running for the past three four years and it has been successful she has a successful instagram page where she displays all her her baking skills and everything so and she has traveled extensively to the u.s her husband is doing very well they have the money and all that so when and she had even visited canada once before and then returned back to nigeria so when she applied for a study permit to come study at i think say it is um is this southern alberta institute of technology or something like that in calgary she applied to come study um baking or whatever something related to what she already has as a business in nigeria it was easy for them to grant her a study permit because what she she's coming to study is in relation to what she already she has already been doing back home so if you're somebody that is applying for a master's or you, have, you want to come to canada to come and study it has to do it you should be able to demonstrate that what you intend to study is what you're going to use at the end of the day back in your home country you cannot um say um you 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 cannot be an administrative person um back in 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 your home country and then you come say you want to do it there is no correlation between what you have been doing before with what you intend to come and study except you can show extensive proof that what you intend to study you'll be able to use it to um, um benefit yourself and when i mean benefit yourself you should be able to show proof that okay the job market is there it means if after studies you'll be able to get a job in your home country you know so they look at all these things they look at the economical situation of your home country i'm going to use nigeria as an example because i'm from nigeria so they look at they assess the economical situation of nigeria they look at what is in demand in the job market they look at where people are getting jobs from and they look at uh, what you intend to study so if you are the type of person that um you are a worker and you have been working all your life and as an administrative person and then you say you want to come study it and you have not been able to demonstrate how you're going to use the it to help yourself you're, you you should be able to demonstrate that 
the IT industry in Nigeria is a booming industry. It's an industry that needs people. It's an industry that has enough jobs available for people. You should be able to demonstrate that. If you're not able to demonstrate that, uh, that what you intend to study has a market back in Nigeria, then it's very, very difficult to get a study permit because those are the things they look at. Um, they look at the employment opportunities. Yes, that's the key word here. The employment opportunities back in Nigeria. So you should be able to demonstrate when you're putting in your application, you should be able to demonstrate that there are, en there are enough employment opportunities. Even if there are no employment opportunities, there are enough business opportunities in the area you intend to study. If you're not able to demonstrate that, um there are employment opportunities or business opportunities that you might not like you might not get the visa so those are the top reasons they deny people visas and look at what you intend to study they look at the employment opportunities available back in your home country and if there is none even if you have met the other parameters like a travel history you have the finances you've paid your tuition upfront even if you've met these other parameters as long as you're not able to demonstrate that there is employment opportunity in the course you want to study and there are there's a business opportunity in what you intend to study you will likely get denied um the study permit visa so that's another reason why people are getting denied study visas then finally one other major reasons why um people are getting denied study permit visas is um, the issue of precedence and when i mean precedence is people who have already applied for study permit before and um, already in Canada. You know, Canada has a network of information. So once people apply for study permit, they come to Canada. They, the schools also give information back to Statistics Canada and back to government and back to the immigration officers. So they are able to assess um, country by country, people who come from each country, what they are doing and what, what they are doing right and what they are not doing right so based on that they are able to say okay from people from this group from this country they want once they come to canada they are able to stay and are able to study and finish and go back to their countries while this group of people they abandon their studies and then go and start working and then do all sorts so this information is already put together and then forwarded to the statistics to Statistics Canada, also forwarded to the immigration authorities. So the immigration authorities, they are very much aware, especially if um, students from African countries like Nigeria, once they come to Canada, what do they do? Are they the group of people who come to Canada and abandon what they plan to come to do in Canada and then start looking for work? Or they are the group of people that continue their studies and finish their studies? So it sets a precedence for every other person that is trying to apply to come to study in Canada. Where you have a situation where if the people who have come ahead before, who came as students and they are not able to cope with their studies, they drop out. Some of them complain that the financing is too much, the school fees is too much, and then they drop out and start working or start hustling and all that, and they're not able to keep up with their studies. It will automatically affect those other people who are planning to come as study students. So that's why even when they did this study direct stream and chose only about six countries like India, Pakistan, China, um, Senegal, Morocco, um, Philippines, um, Vietnam, I think there are about seven or eight countries. They chose these eight countries where they give student direct study permit within 20 days to people from these countries, whereas Nigeria was left out. So you ask yourself, why was Nigeria left out when Nigerians love to study? The question you're not asking is, the Nigerian students that came, what did they do? Did they really study or they were they abandoned studies and did something else? So it's based on the statistics, based on the information that the Statistics Canada have been able to gather on ground and forwarded to the immigration authorities, forwarded to schools, forwarded to so many government bodies. That is what affects why Nigerians, most Nigerians, or a lot of people who are applying for study permit are not getting study permit visas. Um, it's not as if people are not getting, they are getting, but the, 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 the percentage of people getting study permit visas are very, very few compared to before. So it's a case of um, certain group of people who have already spoiled the opportunity 
uh, for others who are trying to you know come to Canada using the study permit and what I know is the trend is uh, the category of people who have been getting study permits are basically those who just finished secondary school so if you are among the people who just finished secondary school and you just want to come to Canada to do your first degree street you're likely to get a study permit visa compared to someone who is already married who has already finished first degree and intending to do a master's degree program for such those category of people it's very difficult for them to get study permit it's not as if they don't get study permit but then like i mentioned you have to assess yourself on all these parameters and if you feel that you can you are able to show an extensive travel history you're able to prove that you have enough resources to sustain yourself and your family without you know resorting to working or resorting to um, switching programs to um, something that is less expensive if you can also demonstrate ties strong ties that will bring you back to your home country demonstrate ties that you have employment opportunities in what you want to study demonstrate that what you're studying has a lot of business prospects um, back in your home country not in Canada back in your home country if you're able to demonstrate that and also um, You know put in an academic plan. So when you put in your academic plan, you have to sh show enough um, Information what why what you want to study will be relevant to you in the future Will be relevant to your home country will be relevant to your business If you are the type of person who wants to just study something because you have a business in on mind or in, in business you plan to establish you should put all those information in your academic plan so this is the information i want to share and i hope you have learned something you can also inform your friends and loved ones and tell them that um if they plan to come to study in canada they should just be prepared it's not that easy it's more like um, you how would i put it now it's more like a camel passing through the eye of a needle canada immigration itself is also not it's not easy then so study permits is also proving to be difficult for a lot of people and um well this is an opportunity for those who want to go to the uk since uk has now introduced a two years postgraduate work permit it's an opportunity for them if canada has denied you a study permit before then just try the uk and uh, let's see how it goes for you over there so this is what I want to share. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.